Good evening. I'm Alex Tremaine. I'm an old man who builds Gundam. Um, and today we will be continuing the build of the um, of the Master Grade Full Army Unicorn. Um, we uh, we finished the um, finished both arms and the shoulders last uh, last Thursday, and we're moving on to I think the waist unit today. Um, but before that, hello, Miss Temperance. Uh, before we do that, however, um, I did promise last uh, I did promise last stream that I would do a bit of a close up on the um, on the two perfect grades that normally sit on the shelf behind me here. So here is the first one. This is he says carefully lifting this. is the perfect grade uh, strike rouge um, he is indeed a very large boy um, this is the um, the strike rouge the strike rouge comes with um, the sky grasper here uh, and it comes with the ale striker which is the backpack unit here which can also be attached to the um, to the sky grasper instead of to um, instead of to the to the Gundam himself. Um, so this took me ooh, a few weeks to build, um, off and on. Um, I I guess I have a, a more reliable method of tracking the um, tracking the build times now with uh, with with actually streaming them. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess th this this was some tens of hours work. Um, as you can see, it's um, there's a lot of there's a, a lot of articulation going on here. All of these um, all of these sort of booster modules can be moved. They're a little on the stiff side, so I'm not going to force them too much at the moment. It took me ages to get it into this uh, into this pose so it would stand up nicely. Um, uh, yes, he really does. Um, the uh, There is a lighting unit in the head, um, which will uh, which will make the eyes light up on the um, on the head there. Uh, and you can also get into the um, get into the cockpit on the front and see the um, see the little man's inside. Um, but uh, yeah, the the articulation on this is really nice. Um, I particularly like the these. Let's see how easily these these knee joints. The way they um, the way they fold out. Um, when you tilt the leg is is very nice um, and it does have some it does have some um, let's see if we can get some of these to pop open yeah so the, the little armor parts on both sides of each leg will pop open uh, which is quite nice so I was, uh, I think there's some, yeah, we've got some, you can't see. So there's little compartments in the side, uh, which contain, if I can persuade it to come out, with the arm in the way, uh, which contain little folding knives. There's, ooh, I'll just drop that. There's a little folding knife on each side. Um, but yeah, the, the the they do go they kind of go all out on these perfect grades in in sort of just there being so much stuff on them, you know. And as I say, the I mean these these shoulder units as well. Uh, let's see if I can remember how this works. Uh, so that opens, and then yeah, there we go. 
the uh, the armor peels away on the shoulder units as well there we go like so so there's a lot of uh, a lot of articulation they've done with it um, and it's all um, this will be easier to show on the on the other perfect grade I have here to to show off but the um, one thing they've done with these is the um, is the all of the finger joints are articulated individually um, but I'll, I'll I'll be able to show that off better on the on the other one. I mean, you can you can see here that it, it's it's very sort of natural feeling how it's um, how it's set up there. But uh, yeah, and there's the ailerons here on the on the wings are are articulated, and th there's just there's just so much so much to these um, and it's they're no more difficult to build but they um, but they have a lot more space to play with in the model so they can do more with the with what they have so I'm just going to get this out of the way over here um, this is the this is the sky grasper that comes with it needless to say the the turret here is adjustable and spins all the way round um, there are tiny humans in the cockpit um, and the it's been a little while since I played with this but yeah there's a little articulation on the um, on the sort of boosters on the side that allows for uh, I think the I think the shield and the gun that are currently being held to be mounted on the side here. There we go. Right, let's get that one out of the way. So this is uh, this is the second one. I this is the first one I actually built. Um, the first perfect grade I built. This is the Zeta Gundam, um, and this is one of the one of the earlier perfect grade kits, I believe. Um, I don't think it was the first, but it's it's one of the one of the earlier earlier batch. And again, this is this is to a degree even more even more daft than um, than that one is it this is this has a lot more to it going on so we have this sort of shield unit um, and I'm just going to turn this sideways a little um, so the remember exactly right so the legs are sprung there's little sort of suspension springs in in each leg um, the um, these little knee joints are sprung as well as are uh, as are these little parts on the back um, there were there were so many 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 tiny little springs in this kit um, it was I didn't lose any I did not lose any I did not have any ping fuck at moments um, but it came close on a couple of occasions um, 
So Again, there is a lighting unit in the eyes on this one. In addition, um, there is uh, there is a light unit on the tail here. If I can remember where where the switch is hidden, where is the switch hidden? He says. which is hidden under one of the parts that's uh, on there at the moment I think um, but there is there is a lighting unit um, let's go sideways here these little these little sections here light up um, if I could remember where the switch was um, there's also uh, this side these these little wingtips fold out on each side and these wingtip lights light up um, that only works when it's transformed into the um, into the aeroplane form which I'm not going to do right now because it's an absolute bastard takes forever um, and we'll be here for sort of half the stream if I do that but I will what I will do is is transform it before next stream um, so it can be shown off in the in the other form there is a little compartment here which then slides down and the tiny human is locked away in there Um, and yeah, it was, it's just a, this was a really interesting build. Um, there's a lot to it, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'll just show here the, every single joint of the fingers are articulated individually so it can be it can be posed as you want it i've had it sat in a little sort of I had it sat kind of in a fist for convenience sake um and yeah it's uh it's a a really nice this was a hmm? gun falling off this was a a really nice model to build I really enjoyed this uh, actually that's that's something we can do let's let us actually take the gun off this and see if I can remember how this works uh, because the gun will huh Stop motion Gundam episodes, huh? Um, that seems like an awful lot of work, and and maybe one day if I have several months free. Um, so the 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 gun, the um, the gun collapses, but then when you uh, pull the handle out, it expands all on its own. Yet another one of the tiny springs that I was really glad that I didn't lose. So it's going to put this back here. There it is. Tighten the fingers around the fingers around the handle so 
The only thing I found that's kind of annoying is that this shield is very loose. The um, the connection here, so I need to have a look at solutions to that. But it's really been the the only downside of this. Um, I will let's just do this. So if I turn the head, the the back of the head parts like so, and in there is somewhere. I can't remember which way it works. There it is. Squeeze that back together. In there is the switch which turns the glowing eyes on, um, which actually look really good. So uh, it's a little bit more of a faff on the uh, on the back of the other one, which is why I didn't turn it on. But the, it's much easier, much easier to get access to the switch on this one. So I'm just going to turn that off again. And yeah, that's uh, so that's the that's the Zeta Gundam. It's a finicky little kit. Um, I've heard several people have not terribly complimentary things to say. Um, <laughs> batteries are actually not too bad to replace uh, there's one in the head unit and that's very easy to get to um, there is a battery in this unit here um, which you get to by pulling the end off um, there and then the only other battery is in the battery that that lights up this the battery that lights up the lights on the tail fin and the wingtip fins um, is, uh, if memory serves, is uh, hidden in here. So the batteries are actually fairly easy to get hold of. Um, that is one thing they they did get reasonably well. That's the only other bit that's not held properly is the is that little clip at the back but that may just be how i've got it it held properly originally um i think it may just not quite be set right at the moment so i will have another play with that when i next time i um uh next time i do the transformation which as i say will be Which will be sometime in sometime before Thursday, because as I say, I'll do. Um, I will transform it into into wave rider mode, as they call it, um, before then, uh, so I can show it off um, in that form on Thursday. Anyway, that's the um, that's the show and tell, as it were. I'm just going to put this one over here as well. Right. So now that's done with, let's um, let's get to work on something a little bit smaller. Oh, right, so where were we? We had just finished the shoulder units uh, and the left arm last uh, last time, and we're moving on to the 
we are moving on to the waste unit so let's have a look at what we need for this we need sprue h which is still in the box so sprue h On here, we're not going to need this. We've got spruce C, I think. I spruce C, yep. Okay, so let's put that over there. Bring in some tools right let's get started so starting with H four and eight Just have exceptionally quiet music going on at the moment. Uh, right, H4 and 8. So H4. And H8. So I hope you've all had a lovely week, weekend and week, since I saw you last. Um, my weekend was nice and quiet with a interlude on a Sunday afternoon to go and get the Covid jab. I am now containing 100% more AstraZeneca vaccine than I was previously. Did leave me feeling like absolute shit yesterday. Um, did not sleep Sunday night. Woke up yesterday. Well, woke up. From what sleep I had, I woke up feeling absolutely rotten, whacking headache. All of the the fluey sore muscle things going on um, so I made the executive decision to book annual leave for the day from work and I um, I felt sorry for myself at home doing very little um, I mean I work from home so it wasn't very different but it did mean I didn't have to think which was a good thing um, thankfully was able to get a decent night's sleep or at least a better night's sleep last night um, which was a relief um, and whilst I still have the whilst I've still got the body aches going on um, I am free of the uh, I am free of the headache which essentially lets me function again. Um, headaches are just miserable. So all in all, not the best couple of days I've ever had, but on the plus side, now protected.
And this is very definitely a good thing. Well, I will be protected in 12 weeks time when I've had the second jab. But I am more protected than I was. Which is, uh, which is good. And both me and my other half had the jab at the same time. She was in a little before me. Yeah, I guess half protected is about right. Um, I can't remember what, uh, I can't remember what percentage protection, what percentage of the population or the percentage efficacy of the AstraZeneca. Um, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine is, but either way, way more protected than I was previously, and for that I'm very grateful. Um, I managed to not pass out whilst having the um, while having the injection. I am very bad at injections. Um, the last time I had to have any injections was um, oh four. No, 11 years ago. Went to Egypt 11 years ago. Um, and there's about five or six things you need to be vaccinated for. Things like hepatitis A, hepatitis B, I want to say typhoid, and um, tetanus booster, and yellow fever. I think that's everything and some of those were in a single jab but I am so very bad with needles um, on that occasion I did go very pale I wobbled and I was uh, I was put on the uh, I was put on the nurses couch to uh, to to recover um, after that I'm I am extremely bad at, uh, at dealing with dealing with needles but made it through drove home all was good on this occasion the uh, the lady administering the the vaccine uh, I was like I you know I warned her I was bad with uh, warned her I was bad with with injections you know and she was like do you want me to uh, do you want me to warn you when I'm going to do it and I'm like no just do it without without any warning just just get it over with and don't tell me when it's going to happen because that will just make me tense my muscles oh yes rabies was rabies was definitely on the list yes I've forgotten that one Blood tests every two weeks. Well, I guess I guess that'll get you over. Um, that'll get you over. Yeah, that'll get you over it one way or the other, won't it? Oof! I cannot imagine. Um, you have my sympathies on that front. I, I would. I would be useless. Um, Chapu was my best man at my wedding um, he's um, he's diabetic um, and uh, you know ever since I've known him I've watched uh, I've, I've, I've seen him sort of you know doing the doing the finger stabbing um, for the blood sugar level testing and then then injecting himself and it's like that's um, that's a that's a whole new level of of just nope for me um, yeah he, he, he would I mean obviously familiarity breeds contempt I guess um, but yeah he, he had this this mean little thing for pricking his finger um, I mean I don't know if, if that's how it's done anymore but he had this um, he had this little spring-loaded gadget with a very small pin on it um, very short pin so it wouldn't go very deep that you just sort of put against your finger and you push a button and it's like a little mouse trap that springs down and stabs the finger winced every time he used it 
Um, but you know, I guess I guess one learns to live with these things. It's just not something that comes up often enough for me to uh, to uh, have have the opportunity for it to normalise for me. But yeah, it, it's it's mad props to um, to diabetics who have to who have to take insulin injections because that's just it's hardcore as far as I'm concerned. I I, I don't know how they cope. positive side is whilst I still ache like a bastard I don't have to do this again for another 12 weeks um, they are sadly talking about this being an annual thing like the flu which is a shame um, but whatever keeps the population safe I guess if if that's what it takes to um, if that's what it takes to mitigate this then that's what it takes I guess uh, and maybe after a couple of years of that, I might actually get used to needles. Who knows? I wouldn't put money on it. But yeah the little finger stabbing mouse trap thing it was almost worse than him doing the actual injections themselves at least that didn't make a noise you know the injection it, it, it's the mouse trap thing made a just oh it seemed like an over engineered solution to a problem you know Other than that, it was a lovely weekend, and even though that was an unpleasant part of the weekend, it was a brief part and a necessary and positive part. Attachments to your phone that stab you and take the readings, that's, I mean that's probably better, you know. I mean, I'm just sort of pro anything that reduces stabbing, particularly having to stab yourself. It all seems very, um, yeah. Right, so that is those two parts. What's next? We need A9 and A10 and H15. So H15 is here. Uh, A9 and A10 are these two. So yeah, the weather's picked up. It's been like nearly 20 degrees here today in the Midlands which is 
frankly a ridiculous temperature after the last few months. I've been sat here, I am sat here at what, eight o'clock in the evening with the window open and I am not cold. It's, um, it's, it's very odd after the, uh, after the cold winter we've had and cold early spring as well, you know. Um, but it does mean that hopefully come Yeah, I've heard it's going down on Thursday. It's not going. It's not going all the way down, though. I think it's um, it's supposed to still be in the still be above ten degrees, which which would be really good. Um, I'm hoping that as um, as I've got from from Good Friday, I'm not back in work until. Um, until the 12th whatever the Monday after Easter Monday is um, our work is closed from Good Friday until that following Monday um, so I'm hoping that at least some of that time we'll have warm enough weather and dry enough weather for me to um, for me to spend some time in the garage and do some work on the kit car which would be uh, which would be nice because I haven't done much work on that for quite some time um, warmest March day in 53 years good grief single digits for Monday the 5th yeah okay well this weekend it is I guess I can I can work with that and raining as well delightful well it wouldn't be the Midlands if it wasn't growing miserable you know I mean it's just it's just how it works We've had we've had a sunny day with high temperatures and the price we have to pay for that is several weeks of grey and miserable now. With the bonus that it's on a holiday weekend, yeah, absolutely. The um Yes. The delights of the West Midlands. But even that is not going to dampen my joy at not having to be in work for 10 days straight, including weekends. So I'm just I'm just not going to worry about it. If it rains, it rains, and I will just have more excuse to stay in and build giant robots. Oh, that was something I didn't show off, was it? Was it? Was it? So... payday happened recently and my poor impulse control also happened so I have oh. let's see if we can get this mm. no nope. gonna have to do this the other way backwards slightly so here we go this was this was paid a uh, 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 there we go this was paid a um, poor impulse control um, so that's another rare uh, and I also sprung for the uh, this will fit I also sprung for the lighting unit to go with it 
Um, so it will be a highly illuminated big boy when it's done. Uh, yeah, that's the size of that. That's the size of box. The um, the perfect grades come in. Um, that's. Yeah, I think that's actually the largest of the perfect grade boxes I've got. Which is um, which is saying something because the the box for the um, for the uh, Strike Freedom Gundam, which I've got, uh, which is which is theoretically on the list to build on stream after we finish this one, um, was pretty fucking big. Um, so yes, there's uh, there's a lot of large uh, large Gundam to be built. So I don't know whether um, I mean it kind of feels like I should build that on stream with all the interesting things that is in it. Um, so it may um, it may be that that will be the next build after this one, um, or it may be that I've got ten days straight of leave from work and it might just get built in that time i don't know maybe there'll be some holiday streaming i'm not in work i don't have to get up in the morning but what i can do is potentially stream and build a giant robot the giantest of robots in fact Particularly if it's raining and I can't cold and raining and going out into the garage will be miserable. <laughs> At some point, I very much, I know I've mentioned this before, and this will be on my list of things to look at when um, if I manage to get out to the garage this week or next week rather is um, I need to look at the possibility of getting internet out of the garage so that I can stream from there because I would like to do a bit of our restoration streaming I mean it won't be good car restoration don't get me wrong this will be this is enthusiastic amateur car restoration but you know maybe it'll be of interest to some people but I need to I need to have a look at exactly how how to get internet and a camera out there. I think I'm in a position where the issue you see is that the garage is at the bottom of the garden, um, which means Wi-Fi don't reach. You know, it's not the end of the world. That's what uh, that's what we got. Um, that's what we got Cat Six cable for. But I will need to get a sort of thirty meter long Cat Six cable to get down to the garage in order to um, in order to make use of that. So we'll see how that goes. Right, so we've got most of this cleaned. And then it's working out how to get a camera in a position that it's actually... <laughs> that it's actually showing something 
worthwhile and interesting for people to see other than just a wide shot of the garage while I crawl underneath the car. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens on that front. I'm having thoughts about camera mountings and how how such things might be achieved but it's a it's a bit of a work in progress at the moment there'll need to be a fair bit of testing and I think unfortunately the critical thing it's going to need is another camera because um, I use uh, the top-down camera here is um, I use a, a Logitech webcam for the face cam here um, but my top-down is actually my phone um, which has a great camera on it I mean I've been really pleased with how well this works the autofocus is generally pretty solid it gives good pictures I've been very pleased with this but the software I use to turn the phone into uh, a webcam um, streams the video from the phone through the Wi-Fi and there is no Wi-Fi down in the garage nor will there be Wi-Fi down in the garage um, so I think it's going to be a case of having to get another wired camera one for a wide shot um, I could probably probably use the the Logitech camera I've got here for the wide shot and then something for um, something that I can sort of move around and take into smaller places to look at things more closely on the car um, and it may be that that's just another Logitech like this um, that may be that may be all it really needs but um, But we'll see. That's a that's a slightly longer term goal. I don't think that's going to be. I'm certainly not expecting to be outputting anything from the garage anytime soon. That's more a late summer, early autumn sort of goal. So yes, my new giant impulse control failure um, was, um, I had my eye on a perfect grade, just regular unicorn, the perfect grade, grade version of this kit essentially, though without the, the full armour additions. Um, and I'd found one in America, don't appear to be any in this country, but I found one in America and went to um, went to check out and then they added like nearly a hundred quid in shipping and at that point it was like mm, no maybe not maybe we'll just not do that whereas this was available in this country and had very reasonable shipping And that was how we ended up with this. So let's put some of this together. Um, so this lives this way round on here, I guess, like so, and then this lives on. 
on here like so Do a little bit of going to go that way which means also need to do it on this side that's one thing I've noticed about this this master grade kit in comparison to the to the real grade new Gundam that we built previously on stream is the um, The quality of the moulding and the fit isn't as high on these um, or on this. I say these. I built the the Banshee version of this uh, off stream, um, which uses, as far as I can tell, similar mouldings but in um, in different colours. Um, there is some difference because this is the Vercar which has slightly different proportions but broadly speaking everything's fairly close um, and uh, yeah the quality of the moulding isn't as good as I found it on On the um, on the real grades or the perfect grades, and I don't know if that's a master grade thing. I have another master grade kit which I'm going to build uh, off stream, um, and I'll I will report back on how that fares. Um, I suspect it's more a. I suspect these things come and go as to what um, as to what the quality of the mouldings are like at any given time um, don't know we'll find out some robots, play some computer games, <laughs> might even stream some computer games. We'll see how things go. I think actually... Well, no, that's not true. The very first stream I did, which was a test stream a little while back now, um, and there is no recording of it, um, I did a test stream of playing Car Mechanic Simula 20, Simulator 2018, which is a very relaxing meditative game. Um, you take cars apart and you put them back together, and it's just 
it's just very chill. There's a lot of similar games out now. Um, I mean, Car Mechanic Simulator has been going since certainly I, I played Car Mechanic Simulator 2015. Um, and there is, as I say now, Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. I guess if they're following on from that uh, from that strategy, Car Mechanic Simulator 2021 should be next. Um, but uh, I guess we'll I guess we'll find out. Um, but there is now. Um, a rover mechanic simulator which allows you to take apart, repair and rebuild Mars and Lunar rovers um, which is also really good fun uh, and there is I know there's in early access a tank mechanic simulator and plane mechanic simulator um, and a few others that are slipping my mind at the moment, but there's outside of the vehicle simulators, there is um, PC repair simulator or PC build simulator, something like that, um, which is taking apart and rebuilding PCs. Um, I have Rover Mechanic Simulator, it's very good. Um, really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah. As I say, if you like cars and you want something that's just sort of low stress and will just keep your brain in neutral, then Car mechanic simulator is really good. And they clearly love the cars because they take a lot of time and effort to make the things look damn pretty. this topic. Streaming games, yes. Streaming games. That's what we're talking about. So yeah, over this week off I am going to definitely do some extra streaming there will definitely be some game streaming I'm not entirely sure what yet um, but signs are pointing to um, potentially some car mechanic simulator if I'm feeling really masochistic, might go that one step further and play My Summer Car instead. Um, which I understand has had several updates since the last time I played it. And it's now even more difficult to keep yourself alive in that game. Um, A, uh, a car restoration and survival game set in 90s Finland. Um, not survival horror, just survival. You've just got to not die while trying to restore a car. 
Um, and in some cases, it's the car that will kill you. Or some of the other vehicles that are available for you to drive very badly. Um, what else is on the list of things to potentially play? Might do some Magic the Gathering streaming. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know how enjoyable it'll be for people to watch me lose at that game a lot. Which is generally speaking what I do. They generally speaking lose in private. So, this now hinges like so. Car Mechanics in 2021 has been announced. Well, there we go. That'll keep me busy when it comes out. Keep me out of mischief which is probably for the best. So, H7. Alaskan Truck Simulator and Junkyard Simulator. Well, uh, that those are, um, those are certainly titles I'll look at. Um, I've seen things like ice road truckers and the like, and that just gives me the fear for Alaskan Truck Simulator. Um, ice road truckers, and there's there's a couple of crazy Canadian heavy vehicle rescue series as well that are either spin-offs or, or similar formats to Ice Road Truckers, they're just... If you ever get a chance, watch one of them just for shits and giggles, because they're fucking terrifying. These people are lunatics. You've got to, you've got to have a special kind of something to be willing to... To be willing to get involved in um, here we go. To be willing to get involved in HGV driving on horrifically snow and icebound roads. I'm not sure I'd even want to play a simulator doing it, let alone doing it itself. Be curious to know what junkyard simulator does. What is the process of simulating a junkyard? What what is your goal? Do you do you want to have a stock of junk? Do you want to have the junkiest yard? Or or do you want to have the best junk and therefore eventually have no junk because people have bought it all? Inquiring minds want to know. I might have to go look that up. <laughs> I 
once I'm done here. <laughs> Actually though, what we are going to do is um, take a quick break because it's quarter to nine um, and I know I started late today but we have been going over an hour at this stage now so we're going to take a break and, uh, and I will be back in a little bit. Um, won't be on long, just stretch legs, grab a drink, whatever you need to keep yourself comfortable and happy and I shall return with more um, with more talking and not building terribly quickly it would have seen today. Um, progress has been limited. Oh well. Anyway, see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. Right, continuing where we left off. Uh, builders of Egypt, city building, resource management type game. Well, I'm always up for a good city builder. In fact, it's one of the things I've been one of the things I've been contemplating streaming with City Skylines. Always a uh, it's another nice relaxing game to play. Thank you. 
weird week this one. With having taken yesterday off due to vaccine side effects and with not being in work on Friday and then until a week on Monday after that. Let's turn this week into a three day week. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really have any motivation. To do anything really. At work, I mean. I mean, still do things at work because work, but it feels like this week is just kind of biding time until. It's like the week before Christmas, you know. Nobody's really doing much because the holiday is coming and. Everybody's in that pre-holiday mode of knowing the holiday's coming and not really sort of... The holiday spirit is already infecting people. And it's noticeable even not being in the office. I mean, first of all, there's a lot of people who've taken leave this week in order to get a full two weeks and I don't blame them if I'd had the spare leave and you know less to do right now because I have a bunch of stuff I need to get done before Easter I'd, uh, I'd have probably done the same but Sadly, there is too much to get done before Easter, and I do want to make sure I have annual leave for later in the year, rather than burning through it all now. to imagine what it's like working in working in the states where annual leave is less of a thing you know where the culture is you work unless you're literally dying and if you're literally dying then that's probably bad because the healthcare system is going to fuck you for all of your monies. And here I am sitting on, you know, 25 days annual leave a year and feeling like that's really just not enough. <laughs> I don't. how people cope without the without the ability to to be able to book that light at the end of the tunnel you know There are definitely some weeks where annual leave that I've got booked that I know is coming is the only thing that gets me through the week. The light at the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, as it were, 
to get you through the day. So, this is where the legs will fit into, and I don't know if I can easily demonstrate this now. Yeah, we can use this for us. What we have here is a little hinge that brings those points where the where the, uh, I guess, hip joints will mount into this waist unit. It brings them out and tilts them down. Um, which just sort of widens the stance a little um, when it's transformed. And then you flip that back in and it, it settles in flush against the centre again. Anyway, on to the next page. to Star Trek Online, which I know is really a sad thing to say. Um, it's, um, I understand it's not the coolest game, but it's free to play, and I have been a massive Star Trek fan since I was a small boy um, and my parents made me watch the original series uh, when it was doing reruns on BBC Two um, uh, what are we looking for? A6 and uh, yeah So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Star Wars fan too, and it should be no surprise that I also have in the past played the Star Wars MMO, which is also actually pretty good. I would say, in fact, that the Star Wars MMO is probably the better of the two. Um, I think it's probably better than, than the Star Trek one. But the Star Trek one's okay if you're into Star Trek. It's a caveat, definitely. But it nails the feel of Star Trek. And to their credit, they keep managing to get actual actors and actresses from the Star Trek franchises um, to show up to do the voice acting. Um, for the Star Trek MMO. Um, I have no idea how much that costs them, but it can't be that cheap. I mean, obviously they're not doing it anymore, but an awful lot of there's an awful lot of Leonard Nimoy voice lines in that game, um, and that can't have been a uh, that can't have been a cheap prospect. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, I've been having a bit of fun with that. It's it's very light. There's not a great deal of effort to it. Um, as free-to-play MMOs go, it's not aggressively monetized. Um, you can do basically everything with a free account. Um, they charge money for ships and for clothing, cosmetics, as per usual with these things. Cosmetics are the, um, are the money maker, be that in clothing or ship form. Um, but it's, yeah, it's all right. I don't imagine it's going to hold my attention for terribly long. Um, it never has done in the past, but there's some new stuff and it's vaguely interesting again. So that's been, it's been keeping me out of trouble at any rate, which is probably for the best. probably do need to look at the Star Wars MMO again at some point. It's been years. I think it's actually been no. I think I've I think I've delved into the Star Wars MMO more recently than the last time I more recently than the last time I played Star Trek online. Until this this recent dive back into it. Um But even so, it's been a good few years since I uh, since I tried out the Star Wars MMO. Should probably see what they've done with it in the time since. When last I played, they'd it wasn't. I don't think it was long after they made the move to free to play on it. Could be wrong. Don't know. We were living in this house, so it's got to have been no more than nine years ago. The last time I tried it out. But that's, you know. That leaves a lot of scope for confusion. strange thing you know but as you get older your memory gets worse <laughs> I mean they do warn you about that but surprising when it starts to happen. The other thing I haven't looked at recently is No Man's Sky and I understand there's been a couple of there's been some updates relatively recently that I haven't really had a chance to delve into so may have to get No Man's Sky back on. That might make a good streaming game actually. We shall see. I 
and your colleague at work today about lockdown beards. You were saying that once restrictions are eased, he's going to be shaving his beard off. And I was like, really? I don't understand. I mean, to be fair, it's been a long time since the last time I did not have a beard of some variety. I will admit that lockdown has left me particularly bushy. Um, but I found I quite like it. Certainly, um, it's certainly less hassle than than even the minimal beard maintenance I was putting in previously, which was occasionally getting the clippers out and trimming it back into a goatee. Um, this new sort of beard maintenance strategy of just let it do whatever the fuck it wants is definitely to my liking. One thing I did get for Christmas and I haven't really, I only really tried it the once, was I got some, given some beard oil for Christmas. And I should probably give that a, a more thorough testing. than I have done as yet. A lot of people swear by this stuff and I've never I've never really bothered. My beard is mostly it mostly does what it's told to the degree that, you know, what it tends to be told is to grow and that's about the limit of it. Um good at that part, you know. But I'm told the, the whole beard all process can, you know, have a fairly curly beard. I'm told the beard oil thing might, uh, might straighten it, which would be interesting to see just how ZZ Top I can get. Um, Yeah, lockdown just kind of gave me the impetus to be to be properly lazy about the beard. You know, not this half-assed laziness that I was doing beforehand, where I still actually did stuff with it. Um, on occasion.
My parents made me watch a lot of weird stuff when I was a kid. Not that... <laughs> Sorry, going back to the Star Trek conversation. Not that Star Trek is particularly weird. But... When I was a young boy... And the British Broadcasting Corporation had this tendency to broadcast um, which way around is this going? This way around. Uh, had this tendency to broadcast um, sci-fi shows, sci-fi reruns specifically, um, at 6 o'clock every evening uh, on BBC Two. Um, here we go, here is one of the um, front panels on the waste unit which will Transform like like so to reveal the green frame underneath. Um, where was I? BBC Two sci-fi shows. Um, yeah, they tended to. Um, they broadcast sci-fi reruns. There we go. Fitted. Uh, on BBC Two, so Star Trek obviously was one of them. Um, the original series of Star Trek, Kirk and Co. But also a bunch of other similarly aged American sci-fi stuff. So. The Time Tunnel um, was one of the ones that that they did. Um, which was about a um, it was about a tunnel that you could you could walk down and it would make you travel through time. I mean it was you know It was about as um, obvious as you can get with that name. Um, but it definitely left its influence on things like Quantum Leap, which was another show that got broadcast in this time slot, I'm fairly certain. Um, Star Trek The Next Generation ended up showing that showing up there. Um, I think it was, I think that was the, I can't remember if that was reruns or whether that was the first, because Next Generation always showed up on satellite TV first, and then I think the, the six o'clock BBC slot, about however long later it was that, that Sky sort of enough for it to be outside the exclusivity deal um, whatever exclusivity period Sky had um, on the Star Trek series used to come on and then later on of course all of the all of the other myriad of Star Treks, DS9 and Voyager and um, well, certainly for that for that period, DS9 and Voyager. I think maybe even just DS9. Thinking about it, Voyager is probably too recent. Um, what else? 
else was there? It was, it was proper, some proper, well, proper old stuff. Some sort of 60s, 70s stuff as well, like, um, oh god, the original Lost in Space series, um, Land of the Giants, which I think was, um, which I think was a similar time period. Land of the Giants was very similar to Lost in Space, except that their um, instead of except that their spaceship was just lost. Um, instead, in um, in Land of the Giants, the spaceship had got lost and crashed on a planet full of essentially giant humans. So the uh, the main cast were. We're always running away from <laughs> running away from giant humans all over the place but it was just they were just giant humans you know it wasn't anything more exciting than that um, what else did There was Roy Scheider in Sequest DSV. Don't think that was on BBC. I think that was a Sunday afternoon. It certainly wasn't on the in the BBC evening slot. I think it might have been a Sunday afternoon slot, but I can't remember if it was. It feels like that like that was ITV rather than BBC. if it was if it was in that time slot but the Avengers um, and to be clear by Avengers I'm not talking about the Marvel Comics Avengers I am talking about the 60s spy series with um, God names Diana Rigg as Emma Peel and Patrick McNee as John Steed that's a weird ass TV show it's great don't get me wrong but it's it's very, very, it's very, very 60s British. And I mean that as a good thing. British in the best way. <laughs> Back when having a spy who saves the world in a incredibly fine suit with a bowl hat driving a Rolls Royce. No driving a Bentley. <laughs> Whilst having Diana Rigg as a kick-ass female lead, who I think drove around in a Lotus. I think she had a Lotus Elan.
it was a good series and if you get the opportunity the, there's a lot of avengers it ran for a while and then there was the new avengers which still had patrick mcnee but had uh, joanna lumley and patrick mcnee was a bit older and so they'd gotten another young guy in to do the action stuff i can't remember who he was um i can't remember the actor's name he wasn't terribly relevant because you know whenever patrick mcnee was on screen it was all patrick mcnee um and there's earlier stuff than the emma peel stuff as well um when it first came out um it was patrick mcnee and honor blackman um which is how she ended up in um how she ended up as pussy galore in uh, goldfinger um was they'd seen her as they'd seen her in the avengers um and they thought you'd be a good bond girl Was the prisoner that definitely wasn't in an e in a early evening slot that was later at night um, if you've never watched the prisoner strongly recommend going and watching the prisoner with Patrick McGowan that's a um, There are very few things more 60s than The Prisoner. <laughs> it has a great theme tune. Obviously there were the usual... Um, there were the usual sort of BBC stuff. So you had, uh, there would be Doctor Who, obviously, when it was on. Um, and to be clear, I am old enough that I'm talking about the original Doctor Who series, Classic Who, as, they, as I guess people refer to it these days. Um, I remember being, I am old enough that I remember being very grumpy when they cancelled um the um the last season of the seventh doctor and ace i'd been watching since the fifth doctor i think at that point i think i think i'd only ever seen the fourth doctor in reruns um, but I definitely saw Fifth Doctor episodes as they came out. Um, right, so... K. We have Sprue K here. So, K7, 8 and 9 is this group here I mentioned it here before but Blake 7 was another one um, similar stylistically and budgetary to 
old Doctor Who, but um, but significantly darker in tone. Um, that's another good one to watch if you ever get the chance. Um, somebody told me on here that it's on um, that it's on archive um, org, so on the internet archive so that's certainly a place to go looking though I believe it, all, it is also on um, there certainly were DVDs that were released of it sort of in the early 2000s don't think they've ever put it to Blu-ray though I imagine that'll happen sooner or later What other? As I say, Sequest DSV, obviously. Um, and then there was the weird. You had the the Roy Scheider Sequest DSV that was all very very fluffy and look how nice the oceans are and let's do conservation and stuff and then you had then there was this weird time jump series that I think had I want to say where they replaced Roy Scheider with Michael Ironside as the captain and that had a very different feel to it because, you know, Michael Ironside I keep expecting him to blow up somebody's head um, with the power of his mind the original Sequest was very much felt very much like a Star, a Star Trek Under the Sea and then the it got a very different tone with Michael Ironside. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, Michael Ironside's great. Um, I'm just not sure he was exactly what they needed for that show. You know, casting Michael Ironside in something sends a message and maybe that's the message you want to send but in fact I would argue that it's often you know it's often the message you want to send I'm just not sure it was the right message for Sequest To be fair though, Sequest, I have tried watching some Sequest in, t in, in years since. I don't think Sequest has aged terribly well. I remember enjoying it as a kid, but I'm not sure it's aged all that well. So this... that and this then goes into here There was thinking of Sequest, there was a 60s 
Super Submarine TV series as well. I can't think what it was called. David Heddison was in it. Sea View, I think, was the name of the submarine, but I can't remember what the I can't remember what the TV series was actually itself was actually called. So I don't think it was. I don't think it was named after the submarine. That was fine. Again, it's very much in the category of Land of the Giants and Lost in Space and the Time Tunnel. Um, Invaders, that was another one. Invaders with... I can't think of the actor's name. The character's name was David Vincent. Vincent, who was a dude who stumbled upon aliens infiltrating Earth to take it over, but they could look just like humans, and the only way you could tell that they weren't humans was because they couldn't move their little fingers. That was the tell, was that their little fingers were stuck. I assure you I am not shitting you on that front. Um, it was a quite tense thrillery type series it was quite good or well, I enjoyed it as a kid I mean again I don't know how well it's aged well I mean it was already old when I watched it but I don't know how well it holds up holds up to more mature viewing if that makes sense Resisted the urge to go back and re-watch some series on the grounds that for exactly that reason that I'm just not sure I'm not sure they necessarily have what it takes to to hold up to that rewatch and I'm perfectly happy with my memories of them without um, without the refresh, if you see what I mean. Don't know. Maybe one day I'll have a I'll have a proper look at some of them again. on that side. This you can now more clearly see how that adjustment affects the, the stance at the hips. There we go. Right. So where are we? Where are we time-wise? Half nine. Okay, yeah, we can keep going for a bit. So, H13. H14. 
we'll do this side first. Um, H14, C7. This one. What of the daft sci-fi did I watch as a kid? Quantum Leap? Quantum Leap was a thing. At that point, Scott Bakula trying to leap home, failing forever, as it turned out. Never getting home. when I was younger and <laughs> the last series first aired I thought it was a bit of a cop out but now makes more sense to me as an older human Obviously there were the, when I was a little younger than that, were, there were all the classic, all the classics of, you know, the A-Team and Knight Rider and Airwolf. were endlessly repeated. Uh, thinking about it, another of the the BBC six o'clock in the afternoon, six o'clock in the evening weekday slots would have been the original Battlestar Galactica. which to this day I still think is great. I mean it's objectively not, but I love it anyway. And it has some of the best theme music. And also Patrick McNee as literal Satan in a sci-fi show. Space Satan, no less. I 
that was weird when I first made when I first realised that it was the same guy from the Avengers and I was like but how can John Steed be Space Satan but he could and he was very good at being Space Satan so you know He was just a good actor, all round. <laughs> was Patrick McDee. Not strictly sci-fi, but the Persuaders? Am I getting that right? Yes, the Persuaders. Roger Moore and... God, what's his name? famous actor, can't think of his name. This is just embarrassing. Tony Curtis, there we go. Roger Moore and Tony Curtis as old money English and one new money American hired or encouraged to both of them um, having come a cropper with the law due to um, the excess that their positions in life have allowed them to indulge in and ending up I think working for a judge to do extracurricular crime solving um, in order to keep themselves from getting bored which, you know would that we could all be um be so positioned in life. Yet another sixties. Not sure if it's sixties or seventies, but yet another um, yet another product of the sixties and or seventies that had. Um, that had some really nice cars. Um, I seem to recall that 
Tony Curtis drove around in a Ferrari in that. And, um, and Roger Moore had a Jensen Interceptor, which remarkably, you know, kept running. Um, my understanding is that Jensen Interceptors are notorious for being um, terribly unreliable. A11. Either way, it was a good show. Did enjoy the Persuaders. And Roger Moore and Tony Curtis are both excellent actors. Um, light-hearted sort of action comedy kind of thing the persuaders and as you might imagine with Roger Moore and Tony Curtis playing off each other in comedy mode it really was quite good the pair of them had real chemistry and despite the stories being perhaps a little naff on occasion the um, the chemistry between the two leads really kept that series very entertaining. of M1. Apparently there are going to be lots of jets, boostery things. I mean obviously Roger Moore was excellent in The Saint prior to that. Um, which is another good series you should watch. Um, certainly, and I do not mean this as a slight on Val Kilmer because he he's a good actor and he worked with what he had, but the late 90s, I think it was late 90s or early 2000s, Saint movie was bad, um, or at least not bad, it wasn't terribly the saint. But the saint is another another good example of 60s action-y series with Roger Moore driving a really pretty car. 
in that case believe it or not a Volvo if memory serves Volvo made a sports car once despite the fact that since then they've made almost exclusively bricks on wheels I mean really good bricks on wheels but bricks on wheels nevertheless there was one occasion where Volvo made an actually pretty good looking sports car like so. Hey Shijipopu, thank you for the raid. Have you had a good stream this evening? You were Persona 4 Strikers? I want to say. Persona 5 Strikers, not Persona 4. crew. I hope you've all had a pleasant evening. Sapporo. Ooh, lovely. I have been building the waste unit here, um, which, uh, which has much sort of transformation joy associated with it. We have the uh, I guess the only way to, only correct way to describe that is the uh, is the crotch section that expands, um, and then the uh, and then we've got this little sort of booster rocket that sits in the back here. Um, so it comes out uh, it comes out looking pretty good. Um, I've not been quite as industrious as I intended to this evening, but I'm pretty pleased with the uh, pretty pleased with the results so far, certainly. Um, also did a brief bit of showing off the um, showing off the perfect grades earlier in the evening. such as the Strike Rouge here, which um, is is a lot of robot with the uh, with the rockets on the back. Um, it's uh, it's a nice build this one. It's an enjoyable one. Um, and I was very pleased with with the outcome of how it uh, how it looked at the end. And I was, uh, I was lamenting, lamenting is probably the wrong word, but, um, I made poor impulse, I had poor impulse control on payday, and, uh, I have added this to the backlog. Oh, 
along with the uh, along with the LED unit to go with it. So that's uh, that's going to be a big old build. Uh, I had been hoping to get the um, just the plain white unicorn, but uh, the one I'd found in the states turned out to have nearly a hundred quid of PMP on it. So. Um, and there was a Banshee Norn available in the UK, um, along with the LED kit. So I now have, I now have these instead. Um, not that I think that. I think I ended up with the LED kit, kit instead of the postage. Swings and roundabouts, I guess. Um, so that means I've got two perfect grades on the. Uh, yeah, it was. It looked like a really good price for the for the kit, and then they were like hundred quid postage. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think it is a hundred quid postage. I think it's not going in the cart anymore. Um, but it does mean I now have two perfect grades in the backlog to do. So, um, I don't know what's going to be next. Um, whether it's going to be the Banshee Norm that I've just picked up or the or the Strike Freedom. Um, the Strike Freedom that I have had. Hang on, let's turn this around. Uh, that I've had sitting around waiting to be done. So I'm. Uh, I'm sort of spoiled for choice at the moment. I don't know what's, uh, I don't know what's happening first. Whether it's the, uh, I know the the original plan was to build the Strike Freedom on stream, but I'm now wondering if the um, if the Banshee Norn with the lighting kit might not be a better a better stream um, build. But we'll we'll see how that goes. I have a week off um, starting on Good Friday. Um, and then the full following week, so I may do some, I may do some daytime streaming during that week. We'll see what happens. Are you winning at Persona Five Strikers? I mean, obviously the most important thing is that you're, um, that you're getting to have a look around Sapporo. But are you, is 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 the game part of this process actually winning for you? Sorry, it, I realise I have not introduced myself. You've all kindly raided, and I have been just sat here chatting. I'm Alex Tremaine. I'm an old man that builds Gundam. I am currently building the Master Grade Full Armor Unicorn here. Um, and today I've mostly been spending on the waste unit. Um, I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays at the moment. Uh, that may be subject to a little bit of change, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and yeah, I mostly I mostly stream Gundam builds and ramble about old TV series. Um, today, mostly 60s TV series that I remember watching on reruns when I was a young person. Um, so uh, yeah. If, uh, if any of that interests you, I would be eternally grateful for a follow, but don't feel you have to. Um, you have, unfortunately, come in towards the end of the stream. Um, I normally stream 7 till 10. Uh, I started a bit late this week um, due to life. Um, but... Um, so I didn't quite, I have been hoping to finish the waste unit this evening, but that's not happened. Um, I am going to be calling it fairly shortly, I'm afraid. But if you're interested, I'm back on Thursday. Uh, same time slot, 7 till 10 UK time. Um, and as I say, next week, possibly some extra streams given I don't have to be in work. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, right. 
Is there anything else for today? What? Let's finish the show and tell. This is the other perfect grade I've built. This is the this is the Zeta Gundam. Uh, something I will do for Thursday uh, is before Thursday I will transform this uh, into its Wave Rider mode, um, so that you can see just how daft this build is. But um, this is, I think this is the most complicated build I've done. Yes, yeah, it is indeed the one that looks kind of like a shuttle when it's transformed. Yeah, it's, um, there is, there is a little, um, there is a little difference here. Um, the perfect grades are one to 60 scale, I think. Um, and if we if we put it next to a a one to one forty four scale, it's it's even smaller. Doesn't even uh, let's see. Doesn't even come up to his knee. But uh, yeah, this was a fun build. This is the one that has all of the springs and tiny screws in it. Um, like all of the springs and all of the tiny screws. We got these little uh, little sprung knee joints here. The um, there is essentially suspension in the ankles. Um, there's there's these sprung parts on the back of the knee. Um, and then there's everything that goes into the transformation, which is quite a lot um, as well. So, as I say, I will carry out the transformation before the next, uh, before Thursday, so that... Ooh, coming apart a little bit there, um, so that you can see what it looks like. But, uh, but yes, it's, uh, it's quite a monster, this one. Um, but uh, it was a really enjoyable build, would recommend. Right, I'm afraid that um, that's my time for the evening. Uh, it's a school night, um, so I'm on the um, I'm in work tomorrow, I'm afraid, so I have to call it a night here. Uh, it's been a lovely evening. Um, once again, shitty thanks for the raid. Uh, it's really appreciated. Um, and I hope to see some of you on Thursday. Um, yeah. Have a great evening, everybody. Enjoy what's left of the week. Uh, remember that it's Good Friday on Friday and that therefore in most cases you aren't going to have to go into work um, I'm certainly not um, and for anybody that does have to work on the bank holiday you have my commiserations but either way um, have a great week and I will see hopefully some of you on Thursday have a good evening all <laughs>